choose from over 50 plus gourmet meal options cooked by world-class chefs and delivered frozen ready to eat within minutes and no commitment welcome to the one shop gourmet food delivery specialized affordable options to eat right and feel great 100 percent satisfaction guaranteed every ingredient is hand-picked to the highest standard and why you should buy from homebistro.com restaurant quality made with natural ingredients delivered right to your door overnight shopping is available diabetic paleo heart health and vegetarian options to eat doing business since 1999 courteous knowledgeable and professional support complete pci compliant ssl security ordering and great meals choose from some of my favorite dishes the mediterranean chicken with orange honey sauce the charbroiled chicken romesco or the grilled chicken breast with sweet and spicy vegetables no matter what you choose you can't lose with homebistro.com eat great feel good and save some money with homebistro.com hit the link in the description section below for more information Daily.com. That's right, the Who That Daily.com. Your one stop shop for everything New Orleans Saints, New Orleans Pelican, LSU Tigers, even the top flight boxing. So if you're a Who That and you're looking for a place to stay up on your team, Who That Daily.com is your site. The Who That Daily.com for the sport Who That in all of us. the black and gold family man we in this thing sports coma going down monday we in the building big up much love to the great saint thank tank we in this thing much love to the black and gold nation i appreciate you guys joining me for a moon day monday episode of the sports coma much love to the family members appreciate y'all i salute the great saint thank tank and the entire who that nation the black and gold nation what's happening big ups to you Appreciate y'all guys being in the building with me on this one. Entitled TSC Saints interested in Miami cornerback Xavier Howard. Hmm. Well, we'll delve into that. We'll get a report going on from there. We'll cover several news notes and items on this episode of the Sports Coma. So I, I ask the family members, if you're just coming in, hit the like button. Upon your arrival, please hit the like button. Subscribe if you aren't a subscriber and join the great Saint Thank Tank. Uh, as well so and also please feel free to share the links in your social media feed with other saints uh family members as well so much love to the family members big ups to you roll call in the building big ups like i always been saying too before i even get to the roll call how can i forget welcome 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 you're now rocking with the sports coma with big q and the guys where we have intense entertaining educating and enlightening sport talk from your favorite sports family i'm big q the host and you're the great same think tank, the who that nation, the black and gold nation, the best in the world. Not the world, but the world. Big ups to the fam. All right, starting off with the roll call, brother Jerry Poor Jr. Who that to you? Big ups to your brother Jerry Poor Jr. All right, JT. What's up, JT? Who that to you, fam? Fly Trey Social Media. Big ups to your Fly Trey. What's happening, fam? He said they better not be interested in him. He's not that good. And we have more valuable talent on our roster. Go get somebody from Miami was just looking for money. Real Saints fans know that. Thank you, Fly Trade. Thank you for dropping that. 
We'll see what they're talking about, fam. Nolan's 504, who that to you, fam? Appreciate you as well. A much love to you. Uh, Nolan said, I don't see how we can sign this guy when we haven't even find <laughs> signed some of our own guys. We covered, we talked about that, didn't we? Last week, we talked about the prospects of Xavier Howard because family members were asking me, Q, how could we be talking about signing or interested in this man when Lattimore is still sitting up there unsigned? <laughs> Well, a lot of shit they do don't make sense, but we'll see if there's any uh fidelity, any fidelity to it is what we what we gonna attempt to do. We know that that happens, fam, from time to time. A lot of moves don't make sense to me or you, but that don't stop them from doing it. Do it? <laughs> How you gonna talk about getting this man, or even show interest in this man? You got Lattimore, three time Pro Bowler, sitting on here, and the only time you touch touch his contract is to free up a couple million dollars so you can sign your draft picks. <laughs> Oh, my goodness, this is funny. But we'll see. We'll see, fam. We'll see. All right, what's up, brother Tori? Tori Shepard, see you. Who that to you, fam? Much love. Greg White, what's up, Greg? Who that to you, fam? Much love to you, brother. Good to see you up in the chat. Pelicans Nola, who that to you, fam? Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> All right, Tim Dunn, who that to you, brother? Good to see you in the chat. What's up, Darrell? Who that to you, fam? Much love to you as well. Appreciate you. Uh, hey, oh, hold on. It just jumped big time on me. Let me see if I can get back. Well, all right. Hey, uh, 19642, who that to your fam? Good to see you. Appreciate you being here in the live stream as well. Joseph Thomas. What's up, Joe? Who that to your fam? Much love to you. Brother Frederick. Big ups to your brother Frederick Savoy Jr. Who that to your fam? Cheryl, hashtag WD for life. Who that for life? Cheryl, what's happening, baby? What's up to the queen? Wallace Smith, who that to you, brother? Wallace, much love. Brother Tragic is in the building. Tragic 504, who that to you? Tech Saints in the building. What's up, Tech Saint? Who that to you, fam? Appreciate you as well. Trey Joseph, what's up, Trey? Who that to you, fam? Much love as well. Hemisphere, what's up, Hemisphere? Much love to you, fam. Good to see you. Slim South 504, what's happening, fam? Good to see you in the chat as well. Uh, Gabriel Thomas, who that to you? Gabriel, who that to you? Shedrick, big ups to my dog. Shedrick in the building as well. Who that to you, Mike Larry? Who that to you, Mike? Good. He said, he said, Q, I told you. He said, I told you, Big Q, the Saints going to get that boy a new contract. Hey, we're going to see, bro. It's just it's just interest right now, but it's interesting that they won't show interest in a player that, you know, you need, you want you want a cornerback with Pro Bowls who's a young guy who bent, that'll fit in with the culture of your team? Sign Lattimore back. Give him his, give him his money. You know, and there's still time before training camp. But if they was righteous, man, they would sign Lattimore, man. There's no reason for them not to sign Lattimore. All right, let's keep going. Who that to the rest of the family? Uh, Tasha, what's up, Tasha? Who that to you, baby? Uh, Doug says, can we afford him? Doug, I'm going to go over the contract and show you, my brother. Who that to you? Got it all dialed up, brother. You know how, I you know how I'm going to come with the receipts and with the facts, baby. Who that to you, brother Doug? What's up, Eric? Who that to you, fam? Who that? All right. All right. Thank you. All right, Eric Samples, big ups to your family. I hope a lot of that. That's interesting. I hope that's pronounced. E is that Eric or Eric? All right, let me know, fam. Thank you and appreciate you chiming in, my friend. Who that to you? Colorado, who that to you, Colorado? Pretty good, pretty good for a Monday. It was kind of rainy, but it's fine. Uh, we made it through. Hope you had a good Monday too, my friend. Mike Larry, once again, big ups to you. Uh, let's see, Alyssa. What's up, Alyssa? How you doing? She said, why don't we look for Gary Ian Conley? He's young and had a great year with the Texans. Should be affordable. That is true. He is also an Ohio State guy. He's also, he was a former teammate of uh, La Marshawn Lattimore. And he's definitely going to be plenty affordable for the black and gold. And he might be the direction they step to uh, when all things are said and done. You know what I mean? It just, you know, you know how Coach Payton feel about the Ohio State guys. Kioke, who that to you, Kioke? Much love to you, fam. Appreciate you. Willie Jackson, who that to you, Willie? Much love to you as well. Hemisphere says, Q, this might be our year. To be underdog, yeah, it, and that's a part of it. You know how we play when we underdogs. There's no pressure on the Saints except for what the Black and Gold Nation is giving them, and them, and they they themselves are giving themselves. Nobody giving the Saints much of a uh, a chance to go anywhere. A lot of them saying the Saints missed the playoffs. A few of them starting to have you know starting to re renege some of those commentaries. Jeff Saturday and Marcus uh, Spears Swagoo is getting his mind right, saying, "I ain't going with that. The Saints is uh, you better look out. Don't don't you write the Saints off." And he know better. Jasper, who that to you, Jasper? Big ups to you. Uh, Eric, okay, I got you. Thank you, Eric. Appreciate you, fam. I just wanted to make sure I got it right. All right, appreciate you. 
And thank all of the great Saint Thank Tank and the Hootad Nation for chiming in on this installment of Sports Coma. Please feel free to hit upon the like button and subscribe if you aren't a subscriber and join the great Saint Thank Tank today. So with that being said, fam, we're going to hop right on into it. Who that to the entire fam. If you didn't hear your name, give me a who that and I'll give you a who that back, baby. Much love. All right. So we'll get right off into this thing. And we're going to start it off, man. We're going to get into it. And this one's coming directly uh, from the Saints News Network. Uh, Mr. Kyle T. Mosley, one of our favorites. Him and Bob Rose over at the Saints News Network putting in work. This is coming from him. And of course, the question is posed. Uh, does does the Saints interest in Xavier Howard have merit? What's up, Cy? Who that to you, fam? Says, man, we don't need that new guy. We got PJ Williams. Oh. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> a, little, a, little, a little levity there. What's up, Kenny? Who that to you, Kenny Sutton? Much love to the Sports Coma Queens, man. Appreciate y'all being in the building. All the queens out here. Much love to y'all. All right, so let's jump right into this. The New Orleans Saints interest in disgruntled cornerback Xavier Howard has merit. Now, this is coming from a tweet posted by Jeff Duncan. We've been covering the Saints for years, man. Jeff Duncan as old as he could be. I mean, but I, you know, I've been uh, listening and reading or writing, reading articles and pieces from Jeff Duncan from when he was on NOLA.com, all that. I go all the way back with him. He old as he old as dirt. But this a lot. The tweets coming from Jeff Duncan and what he said. And let me see if I can pop that tweet up here so y'all can read it firsthand, so you can see where all of this is coming from. And then we'll go back to Brother Mosley's uh, commentary uh, to go at it. Now here it is, right here. Uh, let's see, where was it at? He says, uh, he's, here it is right here from July the 14th. Jeff Duncan says, if Howard hits the trade market, I expect the Saints to be heavily involved. And here it is right here highlighted. I expect the Saints to be heavily involved in trying to land him. And of course, Michael Silva had a mini thread there. He put them excited about my new contributor gig since I started with and such and such. There's a lot of trade chatter concerning Dolphins, all pro cornerback. Xavier Howell, who led the NFL with 10 interceptions in 2020, is unhappy with his contract. Now, as you can see, Duncan says if he hits the trade market, I expect the Saints. Now, he got a little inside a baseball on what's going on. But is this really the case? Now, let's get back into the article by Mr. Mosley. Please feel free to go over the Saints News Network and uh, please feel free to share uh, Brother Kyle Mosley, Bob Rose, and the rest of the guys at the Saints News Network. They write really good articles. And when you find talented people like that, you got to trade. You got to go out there and share their stuff around, you know, to the rest of the who that nation. All right. Tramal, who there to you, fam? Good to see you in the chat. Be kind is in the chat as well. Much love to the fam. All right. So let's get into New Orleans Saints interest in disgruntled cornerback Xavier Howard has merit. Longtime Saints reporter, author and team historian Jeff Duncan tweet may have pointed to the possibility of the team's interest in Dolphins cornerback Xavier Howard. Last month, I asked the question, could Xavier Howard fit the Saints? I believe that he could and would immediately help the Saints defensive backfield. Now, he says, I call Duncan a deliberate tweeter and doesn't deliver far fetched information on the team. Jeff wouldn't use social media unless he communicated with someone knowledgeable of the team's interest in Howard. Previously, Duncan is a highly respected journalist and has interviewed Peyton uh, Michalumas, assistant general manager Jeff Fyle, all the executive ranks, and influence decision. Marshawn Lattimore's legal issues and Richard Sherman drama may force the Saints to decide on a veteran cornerback before training camp. The market for a talented defensive back may become thin next week. So let's take a look at it. The financials must make sense. The financial impact of such a deal with Howard is key. Howard agreed to a five-year, this is a huge contract, man, a five-year, $75.25 million contract through 2024. His cap, a 21 cap figure is $13.5 million with a base salary of $1,208 million. Now, and a $1.4 million prorated bonus and a $25,000 workout bonus, which, is, which he may have already forfeited for not attending minicamp, which doesn't matter. But his cap hit for, cap figure for the upcoming year and 21 is 13 and a half million dollars. You know, does this make sense? And the Saints end up there at 11.5. You know, so, I mean, like we said, we go over the particulars. What's up, Rush? Who that to you, fam? Much love to you. All right. And, and, and that's a major part of it, man, is the money. Because we can surmise and come through with all of these other thinkings and talkings about, yeah, we got to get this guy, but you got to make the contract make sense. Thirteen and a half million dollars is his 21 cap hit fan on a five year, 75 point two five mil contract 
So let's get into the rest of it. That right there is not enough if the Saints are motivated enough. Or let's add this to the, let's add this into the mixture dealing with uh, Marshawn Lattimore because Brother Mosley does raise an interesting point. It's one of the reasons why the Saints are not dealing with Marshawn Lattimore is because of legal issues as stipulated here. Now, as far as the research that I've done concerning Marshawn Lattimore's legal issues is the fact that that is a thing of the past. He had a, 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 a misdemeanor charge that was placed on him and should not be an issue moving ahead unless there's extra information that they know that we don't know. And that is the reason for the hold up with his contract. Maybe. I don't know. But. If the Saints are showing interest, and I and I agree with Brother Brother uh, Mosley, is that Jeff Duncan is not going to put his name out there and tweet some stuff that don't have no, you know, that's not valid, don't have no don't, no truth to it, you know. He's going to give you what he gets from the inside, you know. He's not no Adam Schefter, nobody like that, but he does have a relationship uh, with a lot of the inside people. But there's two things that present that presents interest here is the Marshawn Lattimore thing. Like I said, it was a misdemeanor, but is there something more else that's holding the saints back from giving him an extension? Remember they touched his contract first out of all of the contracts of the, uh, in terms of the guys that they wanted the, the top three, as I'm saying, you had Ram check Lattimore and Marcus Williams with the tag. Well, they're one for they're one and one meaning one win, one loss because they signed Ram check, gave him a big check. And then let the, the deadline go past and let Marcus Williams pay, play on the 10.6 contract. Now, they could have freed up the extra capital needed by giving them an extension, but maybe they don't. They like him at 10.6 or 11, but not at what he wants, which is 13, which a lot of people can agree with that. So the Saints going to carry him at a 10.6 hit. Now, the Xavier Howard thing only makes sense if the Marshawn Lattimore thing makes sense. You get what I'm saying? Plus, not to mention, you're going to lose Laddie Daddy for a couple of games, maybe one, maybe two, maybe three games, depending on what's going on. Let's add that caveat to it. Do Is there a sense of how many games Lattimore is going to get? On Yamada got six games, and usually it's four games, but they're adding the 2019 charge onto the 2021 charge, and he got six games. Suspension. Could there be a component where – Lattimore could be facing two to three, maybe four games suspension. I don't think it's that much, but you never can tell with a scumbag like Roger Goodell. He hates the Saints, and any opportunity he, come, he comes with, he tries to penalize them. Just something to put on the great Saint thing, Tank Collective, man. Just to put, just to something to move around in your head. All right, no problem, bro, brother. Saints News Networks, no, no problem, fam. Appreciate you chiming in, my friend. Who that tell you? So let's get into it, man. Before making the deal with uh, for Howard, major questions must be answered by New Orleans, which is what would the Dolphins seek in a Howard trade? What player, draft picks, other financial terms could the Saints offer in exchange for Howard, which is all valid terms because he's on the Dolphins, right? He's on the Dolphins. They're going to want something for him. They ain't going to give him away for a bag of Skittles and some uh, and, and and some extra tough trash bags. It's got to be something that they want with this. Now, the Saints does have, do have draft capital, but the Saints do not want to get rid of draft capital. And of course, whatever you trade, you won't have to have to bring back in value financially speaking. So let's look at the rest of the article here by brother Bob. I mean, by brother Kyle T. Mosley. Uh, Mickey Loomis' team and Lattimore's cap restructured his final season, but did not work. Now, let, and that's the thing. They restructured his final deal. And remember, Lattimore was not pleased about that. (laughs) He was not. Remember the interview? We played some of that there. He was not pleased by the Saints tough touch in his contract to restructure it and not give him the extension. He three-time Pro Bowl cornerback for the Saints, former first-round draft pick, felt like he did enough to get that contract. You know, these are all valid questions to say the least. I, for one, want Lattimore on this team. I think he earned that contract and you need to pay him. You know, no bottom line, bottom line to it. But did not, let's read that again. Loomis team in Lattimore's camp restructured his final season, but did not work out a contract extension. Does this signal the Saints unwillingness to resign their former 2017 first round pick 
or would Landon Howard resolve a portion of their cornerback issues for the next several seasons? VP of Football Administration, Kai Harley, has been active and highly creative with the players' contracts. And executing a trade for Howard would be another genius move at that moment. The Dolphins' front office seems unwilling to move Howard. Can a deal happen? Bit of a loan shot. And, of course, Brother Mosley says, we shall see. Now, very good article. Now, that it brings a lot of great questions about Xavier and Howard in the Saints. If this, why are the Saints showing interest in this guy, according to uh, Jeff Duncan? You know, who here's his tweet right here. So, I mean, it's interesting to say the least because, the, you know, I'm an optics person. I'm big on the optics, fam. I'm big on the optics. How are you going to look at trying to get a kind a cornerback who's you who's who's in? Let me see a brother. But he put the numbers here right here. And this is the salary. Right. Uh, brother Kyle. Here it is right here. Brother Kyle got the numbers here. Five years, seventy five point two five mil through twenty twenty four with a twenty one cap figure of thirteen and a half mil base salary of twelve oh eight mil. Thirteen, twelve. There you go. That's big dough right there, man. 12 million. Interesting that they would even think of such a thing. Lattimore should be entrenched as the next person that gets that contract. Because based on what, what the information I've been researching about his legal issues, that it shouldn't be an impediment to his contract extension. He's giving you three more. He's giving you some good years, three of which were Pro Bowl years. Co- compensate the man accordingly. That's my spill on it. So, I uh, thank Brother Kyle T for dropping the science in this one, real well written. And we're going to jump from one uh, brother to another one. Here's Bob Rose's article. So I'll tell you, them Saints News Network people putting in work. Five Saints players available for a Xavier and Howard trade. So, but, you know, Brother Kyle gives you the particulars. And, we, and then Brother Bob is going to give you the possible players that could be involved in such a deal if this deal has legs. It's very strange. The optics is all bad here on this. The Saints are rumored to be a potential trade suitor for the star cornerback Xavier Howard, while the Dolphins are rumored to be looking for a high draft choice. Could New Orleans also dangle dangle a starter or two as trade uh, bait? Once again, that's Bob Rose dropping the science on that one. And let's and please feel free to go there. Like I said, share these men articles, man. They be doing good work over there. The Saints have a big problem at cornerback. <laughs> Veteran cornerback Jack Rabbit Jenkins was released this offseason to create salary cap space. New Orleans has not addressed the void in free agency, although several solid players remain available at the position. They used a third round draft choice on Stanford's Paulson Adebo, an exciting prospect who should be an immediate contributor. Defensive back Chauncey Gardner Johnson, one of the league's best in the slot, is expected to take on some cornerback duties this season. To make matters worse, perennial Pro Bowl cornerback Marshawn Laddie Daddy Lattimore was arrested this offseason, a transgression that could cause him to be suspended for the start of the season. Lattimore is also coming into the final year of his contract. His next deal will put him amongst the NFL's highest paid players at his position. The rest of the team's depth chart at cornerback includes erratic veteran Patrick Robinson, several for, and you know, Bob Rose, <laughs> you know, like Patrick Robinson, and several first or second year undrafted players like Keith Washington and Bryce Thompson. I'm really big on Keith Washington and Bryce Thompson. I like those two young guys. Adebo as well. Adebo has instincts and athleticism to be an outstanding player, but is bound to have some growing pains as a rookie. Now, uh, C.D. Deuce is the best used around the defensive formation. Robinson and Williams are proven liabilities as full-time starters. And see, they tell it, see how they're telling it, that real deal? A lot of people will be kissing Robinson and Williams' butt. But these guys telling you, these are liabilities. These guys are liabilities. Why? Because they're fundamentally bad. You know, one guy can't stay healthy. The other guy can't turn his head around to make interceptions and gets constantly burnt to the point that we created the rotisserie boys and put them in the mix. We had uh, we had a Dollar Tree quartet that was comprised of some of the Saints' uh, nine fundamental and baddest cor- and, and, and not so good cornerbacks on the team. Remember the Dollar Tree quartet last year, fam? Remember who it was? It was P.J. Williams, Patrick Robinson, uh, Ken Crawley, and uh, uh, J- uh, J- uh, Justin Hardy. Those were that was a Dollar Tree quartet. <laughs> and the, probably the worst of all those cornerbacks was Justin Hardy. I mean, last year the Saints had an opportunity when they got a little thin at the cornerback position. 
to go to Justin Hardy, who's when he's not doing special teams work, his position is a cornerback. Well, they passed his ass right up on the depth chart and pulled Pell Grant Haley out of the stack somewhere and threw him in the game. Y'all remember that? And I'm thinking to myself, where the hell is Justin Hardy? Boy, he was off. The Saints do it too. Now, the Miami Dolphins have a big problem with their best cornerback, all-pro cornerback Xavier Howard led the NFL with 10 interceptions, 20 passes broken last season, giving up less than 52% completion percentage when targeted. Now, that's pretty damn good. When was the last time, fam, we had 10, a 10 interception uh, 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 cornerback? Y'all put that in the chat for me. Remind me, family. Y'all let me know. Y'all tell me when was the last time. That just jarred my mind when I seen 10 interceptions. My goodness. Y'all tell me when the last time we had a, a Saints cornerback that had 10 interceptions in one season. When did that happen? Let me know. Put it in the chat. All right. It was the second time in the last three years that Howard, who's 28, led the league in interceptions. Okay. Second time. Why about? Okay, good. In three years. So that's pretty good. So you know what's wrong? A lot of people can talk about this is a lot of money, but obviously he don't have a problem. He doesn't have a broken neck. His neck worked where he could turn around and look at the ball and pick it off. They said that this man led the league in interceptions two of the last three years. That's actually pretty good. He's 6'1", 100, almost 200 pounds. Defensive back has developed into one of the NFL's top cornerbacks since being selected in the second round of the 2016 NFL draft. Howard is unhappy with his current contract and has threatened to hold out until he gets a new deal. He's entering the third year of a contract that pays him an average of $15.1 million per season, sixth highest among all cornerbacks in the league. So let me tell you something. If this is really true, and I'm not saying it is or it isn't, but I'm just going over it, fam. If this is really true about the Saints having interest in the guy that's making this kind of money, you're not you're not going to pay play or pay, excuse me, uh, uh, Marshawn Laddie, Daddy Lattimore. If you take on Howard's contract, there is absolutely no way that you're going to give Lattimore a deal that's going to make him one of the top three highest play, paid cornerbacks in the game. If that happens, then pretty much what happens is game over. Game over in terms of Lattimore being a saint. So, I mean, you know, the interest is there and I can respect the productivity, but he's upset by his contract, which means whoever takes him is going to have to rework his contract. So it's not like, OK, we don't like the Dolphins, whatever. OK, I'm coming to the Saints for whatever. And then when you get here, he's going to want a new contract. So you're going to have to. <laughs> We're just going over it. We're just mulling it over. After all, this is the great Saint Think Tank, which in, we, we think about stuff. We kind of work this stuff on through. You see what I'm saying, fam? All right, let's keep it going. Miami's reportedly filled in trade offers for this disgruntled corner, with the Saints being mentioned among potential suitors. How will be a $12.1 million cap hit for a team that trades from according to current numbers from Sportrack, one of my favorite uh, money resources in terms of contracts and otherwise. Now, the Dolphins are likely seeking a first round draft pick at minimum from any team is interested in Howard. Here are five New Orleans players who could also be involved in a deal that might lower that draft pick demand. Marcus Davenport. Marcus Davenport. What's up, Claude? Who that to you, fam? Big ups to good brother Pat Rich. Who that to you? Your boy Cuts. Who that to you? Big ups to the fam, man. Appreciate y'all guys being in the building, man. Much love to to the great Saint Think Tank. If I if you didn't hear your name, give me a who that. What's up, Kai? Kai the great who that. Uh, Sean C. What's up, Sean? Who that to you, fam? Appreciate you being in the building as well. Uh, what's it? Nine eight five J in the building. What's up, nine eight five? How you doing, brother? Hope you and your family is are doing well. Much love to you and blessings and and and, and big ups and health and all kind of protective. Uh, uh, you know, prayers are going out to you and your family, my friend. Much love to you. Uh, Ramsey, who that to you, fam? Good to see Ramsey in the chat as well. Big ups to you. All right, much love. All right, fam, also please hit the like button, fam. We got over 80 people in here. Please feel free to do me a favor and smash that like button, fam. All right. So at the top of the list is Davenport, defensive end. Now, they got a lot of great St. Thank Tank family, and a lot of family from, from the Who That Nation. It's, it's, it's burnt out on Marcus Davenport. A lot of people have even using that really mysterious or that hardcore B word. I won't say it, but y'all know what it is on Davenport. And that's not fair I don't, that he is not, is not the B word. And you know, it be, I ain't talking about that other word, but you know, a word that y'all trying to put on Marcus Davenport, you know, he's in the fourth year. He got two years left this year. And then his final year and Davenport has to step up, step out. And I think this year he steps up 
But anyway, let's see what uh, Bob is saying about this one. Davenport defensive end. Uh, Davenport, who turns 25 before the season open, has been a disappointment because of recurring injuries. That's true. Selected 14th overall in 2018 NFL draft. Supposed to be Lamar Jackson, by the way. He's flashed the potential of a disruptive force, but struggles with consistency and reliability. You can't get him. Get, he hitting on the money, that one. The Saints picked up the fifth-year option on Davenport's rookie contract, which, you know, Coach Payton had to do that because he got to give him every, every opportunity to kind of get himself together. Now, he'll count. $4.3 million against the salary cap this season. That number will escalate to a $9.55 mil hit in 2022. Trading Davenport could cause a $2.1 million dead cap this season, but another team would absorb his entire contract in 2022. New Orleans showed faith in Davenport's potential by picking up his fifth-year option. However, defensive end is a position of strength for the team. I agree with that. That's generated over 145 sacks over the last three years. Baby, when you spell it out like baby, like that, baby, don't it sound good, baby? Baby, when you spread it out like that, baby, don't it sound real good, baby? Baby, baby, let me tell you something, baby. Baby, Reverend Saint had to come in here and talk on that, baby. Baby, let me tell you something, baby. Defensive end position of strength for the team, baby, that generated over 145 sacks over the last three years, baby. Baby, did you hear that, baby? That's a lot of sackage there, baby. Baby, that sack's all over the place, baby. That's And most of them sacks, baby, is about us putting Maddie Icy Hot on the ground, baby. Baby, I'm telling you, a lot of that came from Cam, the man, Jordan, baby. Putting Maddie Icy Hot on the ground, baby. You know that's the truth, baby. Baby, I ain't tell you. Baby, big ups to my dog, Big Low, baby. Baby, I had to throw that one that big low, baby. <laughs> I had to throw that one that big low. What's up, big low? Who that to you, my brother? All right. <laughs> throw a little something at him. All right. Yeah, let's say, okay, first and foremost, let's keep it going. First round pick Peyton Turner joins a loaded position that includes Davenport, perennial pro, pro bowler, Cam the man, Jordan, Carl Granderson, uh, to new casting yo, a uh, passing yo, and pass rusher Noah Spence. Now Miami's pass rush uh, rank, uh, they were pass pass defense ranked twenty third in. Oh my goodness, that's bad. They tied the Saints with a league high eighteen interceptions, but had a difficult time generating a consistent pressure up front. Davenport would add a young and dynamic presence to a Miami front seven in need of a playmaker. Cam Jordan's on the list. How about that? How about that? Cam's on the list. Now let's see what he's saying about Cam. The selection of Peyton Turner raised some eyebrows for those who follow the Saints, given their other pressing needs. Some believe that it indicated that the Saints was ready to move on. Is could, could that be the case? Move on from the uh from uh some believe that it's indicated the Saints was ready to move on from the off injured Davenport. There were other rumblings that the Saints were eyeing up an eventual replacement for Cam Jordan, who's coming off a down year. Now the 32-year-old Jordan had seven and a half sacks and 26 pressures. In 2020, his lowest production in five years. He was often handled by a single blocker, rarely seen in his stellar 10-year career. Very true. Jordan is one of the best players in franchise history and just one year removed from a career of 15 and a half sacks and 49 pressures. If the Saints believe that Jordan is on the downside of a great, a great career, they may include him in a deal that would net them a star defensive back. Jordan is in the middle of a complex contract that would have to be reworked in a potential trade. He would certainly add leadership and experience to the Dolphins' young defensive front. Hungry to bounce back from a disappointing year by his standards, it seems unlikely that Jordan would be moved. The Saints host the Dolphins in a national televised game this season. Would you want to be Jameis Winston playing against the angry Cam Jordan on that team that dealt him away? No, I would not. No, I would not. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't know. I want to be no, having no part of that equation. All right, so I mean, it's interesting, man. Because listen, the 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 black and gold know what time. What's up, King Logic? Who that to you, fam? Good to see you in the chat, my brother. Appreciate y'all being here, man. Yeah, and and that's the interesting part about the whole mix, is that when you look at uh, Cam, Cam, I think Cam has what two or three years left on his current. I think like maybe two years left on his deal. That he, you know, that extension that he had a couple years ago. I think he got a couple years left on the deal. And you have Davenport with two years left. And it only made sense for the Saints to get a defensive end, even though a lot of people felt like they reached on Peyton Turner, who's a good player. Many people see him as a developmental player, much like Davenport was when we selected him several years ago. Hopefully it's not the same, you know, first couple of years in the game. But uh, I don't think he'll be moved. But it's it's something it's food for thought. Traquan Smith. How about Traquan Smith in the mix? 
Smith has been identified as a potential breakout candidate in New Orleans offense that will have more deep opportunities with the strong arm Winston or Taysom replacing the retired Drew Brees. Entering his fourth NFL season, Smith has averaged only 26 receptions for 370 yards per year. He has never been able to secure the number two wideout job on a team desperate for a consistent complimentary, complimentary threat to the all-pro wide receiver Michael. Can't guard Mike Thomas? The 6'2", 210-pounder, Smith struggles to get separation but is a downfield threat and a terrific blocker at the position. you have to hold off challenges from the dynamic Deontay Harris, Marquez Callaway, and explosive rookie seven-round pick Mr. Quan Baker. Miami passing attack ranked just 20th in the league last season wide out Devontae Parker, tight end Mike Jacecki, are outstanding receivers, but the Dolphins would like to give a second-year QB tag Lavoa more weapons. The Dolphins selected explosive wide receiver Jalen Waddle with the number six pick of the draft. They also added wide receiver Will Fuller this season. Fuller, like Smith, has struggled with injuries over his career. How about Latavius Murray next up? Latavius Murray. You know, so what's up, Randolph? Who that to you, fam? And I remember this ain't Latavius was placed on the Saints uh, trading block this past offseason, fam. And, and he has not officially been taken off. So, I mean, you know what I'm saying? We knew they put him on the block. What's up, Okula? Big ups to you, bro. They put they put Latavius on the block during the season when they tried. They traded Malcolm Brown away, and they were looking to try to move Latavius Murray. He's still, I mean, a, you know, still on that block. The Saints hadn't put anything out saying that, oh, we're going to keep him. You know, so this, this makes a lot of sense. Let's see. Miami has invested little in the running back position in this show. The Dolphins ranked 22nd in the rushing offense, 29th in average yard per carry in 2020. They ranked last in the NFL in both categories in 2019. Third-year running back Miles Gaskin led the team with 600 yards rushing last season. He'll be joined by free agent acquisition Malcolm Brown, but the Dolphins lack a future back to take the pressure off Tag Lavoie. Third, uh, they got 31-year-old Latavius Murray has shown he can carry the load, a feature back, and would start for several teams. He rushed for 1293 in two years in, re in reserve duty for the Saints, averaging 4.4 yards per carry and scored 11 touchdowns while recording 300-yard outings. New Orleans offense revolves around the elite skills of Mr. Elvin Kamara, but Murray has provided a lethal one-two punch at the position. He's a big back capable of, capable of picking up tough yards between the tackles, but also is a capable receiver out the backfield. The Saints have good depth at running back. Versatile veteran Ty Montgomery had a 100-yard game in place of a sideline Kamara and Murray last season. Dwayne Washington, along with former undrafted backs Tony Jones Jr. and Stevie Scott III will com compete on a deep depth chart. And, of course, here's Marshawn Laddie Daddy Lattimore is on this list. Now, if you – if and, and, and if they're considering Xavier Howard, to give him that kind of money. I don't understand why would you just pay your pro bowler. But anyway, this is just, just you're just going over it. The only player on this list that would involve an even player for player swap also would need the question that the Saints have at the position. Lattimore is 25 years old. He's three years younger than Howard and every bit the shutdown corner. Lattimore has allowed only 52% completion percentage when targeted over the last two seasons and routinely locks down upon his top receiver. Statistical comparisons are similar. With Lattimore having the advantage in age and Howard holding significant edge in career interceptions. As far-fetched as this deal may sound, it could still make sense for both sides. Miami is filled in trade offers because Howard has stated he's unwilling to play, pay, uh, excuse me, play at his current deal. New Orleans may be willing to renegotiate with Howard, something they would have to do if they wanted to keep Lattimore beyond 2021 anyway. But Howard and Lattimore would be among the NFL's highest paid cornerback. Uh, you know, it would be the NFL's highest paid cornerbacks with their next uh, cornerbacks. Lattimore's age gives him a long term upside. But remember, he could be suspended to start the year. Saints face Aaron Rodgers in the Packers this season opener, a daunting task with a fully armed defense, but especially so without Lattimore suspended defensive tackle David Onyemata and a crew of unproven cornerbacks. Miami, who signed Byron Jones to a big contract this offseason, is better equipped to absorb a Lattimore suspension to start the year, especially if they believe that Howard could hold out until the regular season. The Dolphins and Saints engaged in player swaps recently. In 2015, New Orleans sent wide receiver Kenny Steeles to Miami in exchange for a third-round draft pick. And, line and linebacker, remember his Daniel Ellerby, who was a good linebacker, he just couldn't stay healthy. He, that Daniel Ellerby was, when he got on the field, Boy, he was not. He would he would handle business. He would make plays. But the problem with Ellaby, he could never stay healthy. The Saints traded reserve linebacker Vince Bigel 
to the Dolphins in 2019 in exchange for Kiko Alonso. Y'all remember that? And so they've done some dealings with the Dolphins. That was well placed in this article to let you know that they trade frequently with this team. Unless it's Lattimore, New Orleans will still have to part with a draft choice or two if they want Xavier Howard. However, including a player like Davenport, Murray Smith, or even Cam Jordan will fill a need for the Dolphins and cost the Saints less draft capital. So what say you, family? Uh, really good uh, articles by both uh, Kyle T. and Bob Rose from Saints News Network. What say the great Saint Tank Tank and who that nation? What do you guys think about this? What do you guys? Thank you, Pat Rich. Thank you, brother Pat Rich. He says, I think Jameis is in the lead for the QB because he's played against the the South, he's seen them all up close. He's our best chance. Thank you, brother Pat Rich. And uh, you must be a seer, my friend, because we got uh, we're gonna get to an article by Mister Taysom Hill. And because and thank you for your super chat and thank the brother Pat Rich. We perfectly segue to this article. This is coming from the Pro Football Rumors. Taysom Hill favorite to open the season at Saints starting QB. See how the great Saint Tank Tank work together, baby. You see that synergy and, and chemistry right there? Baby, did you see that segue, baby? That was perfect, baby. Right on time, baby. Right at the end of the article, the start of the article, baby. So much love. All right. So going in with that, let's go into this one. Now, this one here by Rory Parks there, man. And uh, Mike Triplett of ESPN wrote several weeks ago that Jameis Winston may have the edge over Taysom Hill. In this summer's battle, be the same starting quarterback. Triplett pointed to Winston's first round pedigree. Experience and upside, though he noted the former Buccaneer would need to clean up the turnover and accuracy issues, issues that led to his exit from Tampa Bay. But, you know, like I've said, we talk about Jameis having all those turnovers, but they don't talk. Of, they never put the onus on that craptastic offense that Bruce Aarons was running out there. You know, when you got to gamble to throw the ball, to hit at it there and put all the, show, the, the pressure on Jameis to win the game. Didn't have a running attack. Offensive line was uh, was craptastic. Defense was it was there and not there. The team was not a very good team. And you had Jameis out there throwing the ball, receivers dropping the ball, you know, ball going off their hands into interceptions. You got all that, but never mind none of that. Never mind the offense that a craptastic garbage time stuff that was operating on with Bruce Aarons. Even that got him and Tom Brady in a head to head duel, going head to head, fussing at each other. Because Tom Brady telling them that this offense is crap. And then he had and then wrestling with Bruce Aarons for the control of the offense. That happened. And then when remember there was a, a span of time during the season when they had Tom Brady was on pace to throw 20 interceptions. <laughs> Until Tom Brady got in the office and had the head to head thing. Thank you, Kelly. Kelly says Dave Whistle had 10 interceptions. Okay, to see Kelly went all the way back. Thank you, brother Kelly. Appreciate you. Dave Wetzel had 10 interceptions in 1967. Fred Thomas had five uh, interceptions in 02. Johnny Poe had seven in 93. And Sammy Knight had six in 2001. Thank you, uh, Kelly, for dropping that science, brother. Boy, that was the last time we had a 10 interception Saint cornerback was 1967. Oh, my goodness, fam. We've been we've been we've been uh, talent starved at the cornerback position. You know, we have a good cornerback and a craptastic cornerback. You know, we, you know, we had pretty decent cornerbacks over the last several periods. Some inconsistent play from some, but that is a long, long time to go without uh, a 10 interception. And it's not an easy feat, by the way, to get 10 interceptions in a season. Maybe it could be if our cornerbacks would turn their head around and look for the ball as opposed to not look to get burned all the time. <laughs> Speaking to PJ, speaking to Ken, speaking to, you know what I'm saying? Patrick Robinson will turn around when he's in the game, but his hamstrings got to, he got to make a deal with his hamstrings so that he can play when he's supposed to play. See, that's what you got to do, Pat. Pat, you got to go talk to your hamstrings and say, listen, I'll make a deal with y'all. I promise to stretch y'all out for more than what I've been stretching if you just come on and work with me and we'll get this here thing done. You know, that what he got to make a deal with his hamstring. That's what he need to do. Anyway, let's get into this article. However, Ben Violin of the Boston Globe hears that Hill, not Winston, could have the upper hand, citing league sources. Violin says that Hill's ability as a dual threat talent might compel head coach Sean Payton. Jameis Winston can also run with the ball as well. He's not a statue. Jameis can win now. He can run too. All right. Might compel Coach Payton to open the year with Hill under center. If Hill should falter, it would be easy enough to insert Winston and install a more traditional offense. Listen. I love Taysom Hill, but the question is, can Taysom run that offense the way 
we see fit. Remember last year, he played in those four games, and that was his first four starts of his professional career. And what, Taysom is 31 years old. Now, he's been working his ass off to get better with his accuracy, but it's a tall task to ask of Taysom to do that, man, because, you know, he has to develop pocket presence, which has to deal with his patience, being able to have the insight in a second vision, or I guess you could say the uh, presence, to be able to feel the pocket, so to speak, to know when things are collapsing around you. He has to still have a work on the QB clock in his head. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, and go through his progressions while the clock is going on. And when he gets to that certain marker, then if he don't get rid of the ball to the check down or find where you want to go with his first, second, third, fourth option, go to the check down or simply vacate the pocket. A lot of times people don't want to see him running every other play. So he's going to have to use his arm and accuracy to get there. And speaking of accuracy, that's the thing Taysom need to work on as well. Intermediate and deep accuracy is a big part of the game. We've seen Falter, we've seen Taysom kind of overthrow guys last year. I remember he was throwing a Jared Cook. He threw the ball three feet above Jared Cook's outstretched hand, and Jared Cook is six seven. So I mean, <laughs> and he just missled the thing. So I mean, he has to have a you know he has to work on that touch and that accuracy a little bit more. Now Taysom's a phenomenal player. I'm not going to bet against Taysom Hill because Taysom went out there played the wide receiver position so well that he kept wide receivers that was doing it full time on the bench. He went out there and played tight end so well that he kept certain tight ends on the bench. He went out there. Before he started fumbling over the place, he was stealing reps from Latavius Murray to be the running back. He even got on special teams and blocked punts when you can, when they got guys that were playing special teams full time, couldn't do that. So, like I say, he does things. He has an ex- exceptional ability or gift to be able to make things happen no matter where he goes. But the QB position is entirely different. It, 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 and, you know, and I'm not saying that Taysom can do it because it takes a high IQ football wise, period to be able to absorb all those different positions in those different rooms. He's spending 25% here, 25% here, 25% here, 25% here, and still pick up 25% of those rooms and then go out there and perform the guys, outperform the guys that was in the room 100% of the time. So I'm very aware who Taysom Hill is. But can he put together all of those things, whether he played the wide receiver, running back, tight end, fullback, whatever he played, can he take gain the insight of all those different positions and then apply them in the mindset of a quarterback with the patience to stand in the pocket, a that can deliver an accurate ball, short, intermediate, and deep wise, you know, go through his rep, go through his uh, progressions like he's supposed to, and be able to option, audible, do what he got to do. Can he do it? We'll see. But according to this gentleman, that Taysom is leading the block. Unlike Triplet, Violin is not a Saints beat. Uh, he says not he's not a Saints beat writer. But both writers make valid points in 2020. Winston's first in New Orleans. It was Hill who got denied during the Drew Brees injury related absence. And he acquitted himself, uh, you know, acquitted himself nicely. Now, he did get denied because Coach Payton needed to see what Taysom Hill was made of. He needed to see what Taysom could do. He needed to. You know, if you're saying Taysom Hill is Steve Young, wouldn't it look pretty, uh, you know, it'll look, he'll look like a hypocrite if he went to Jameis Winston and not Taysom Hill last year when he was telling everybody Taysom Hill is Steve Young. Not like Steve Young, but is Steve Young. Yeah, Taysom Hill Steve Young. So if you you going to go to Jameis and leave Steve Young on the bench, so Coach Payton knew what he had to do. And he turned in the performance where we went 3-1 and one at the position, but two of the games – it wasn't really good out, especially against Denver. That didn't look good at all. The Philadelphia game, it wasn't all that. And the two wins came against the Atlanta Falcons. So, I mean, he got a gift for beating the Falcons. But, you know, like I said, both of those was kind of a 50-50 deal. You know, but can Taysom improve? I think he can. But how much so is the bigger question. All right, he went 3-1 and one as a starter over the four-game stretch. He threw for four touchdowns against two interceptions while completing 70%, 72% of his passes. He also rushed for four TDs and maintained a yard per cast, a yard per carry average of 5.42 rushes first down. Two rushes, first down. Two rushes, first down, like I always say. On the other hand, Winston, who's 27, is over three years younger, and he has started 70 games in his career as opposed to Hill's four starts. Big difference. 70 games versus four starts at the QB position now. That is a huge difference in uh, experience 
when you when you look at it like that. Think about it. He's three years younger and has 70 games of experience versus Taysom's four starts as a quarterback. That is a lot of experience he will have to overcome to beat a guy with 70 games worth of NFL experience. That's a lot, man. The number one over, and then the guy's younger than him, you know. So, I mean, we'll see, man. It'll be intriguing. The number one overall pick of the 2015 draft has also shown plenty of flashes of elite ability, but again, he could never quit. You know, he could never quite shake the turnover bug. And his last season with the Bucks in 2019, he threw in an, an incredible 30 interceptions. But the guy don't mention, like the, most of these guys who be covering the Saints, some of them be forgetting the fact that Jameis might have thrown 30 interceptions, but they never say that they forget to mention that he threw 33 touchdowns with that garbage time Bruce Aaron's offense and 5,109 yards, which led the NFL that year. So it's always an attempt to throw him down. They never t- truly classified like it was just all on Jameis. He was just bad. It was just Jameis out there just throwing the damn ball away. No. If you go and watch that season when Jameis Williams was doing that, you see that guys was dropping the, the ball off their fingertips into interceptions. You had him being basically the, the guy that had to carry the offense because the running attack wasn't there. The offensive line wasn't all that good. The defense was sporadic. It was a bad team. Tampa hadn't made the playoffs in seven years prior to Tom Brady coming and getting the, all those guys together to go to the Super Bowl last year. That was a bad team, but they never blame nothing on Bruce Aarons and his shitty offense. They never give the put the, the, the emphasis on where it's supposed to be. They put it all on James. That's so unfair. So unfair. So unfair, but that's why it's up to guys like you and me to tell it to, that real deal. And uh, both Winston and Hill are signed through the 2021, and a little more than a week, they'll begin their battle for the Saints' starting job this season, and perhaps for a lucrative multi year contract starting in 2022. So, Taysom Hill, a lot of people saying Taysom is favorite to be the guy in. What say you, great Saint Think Tank? What say you of the Who That Nation? Do you guys agree with that? Do you agree with Taysom Hill being the favorite going into the into training camp? Y'all let me know. What's up, Jeffrey? Who that? What's up, young epic? Big ups to you, fam. Appreciate y'all being here. Will Dickerson, what's up, fam? Big ups to you as well. Much love to you guys. Appreciate you. And thank, thank, thank you guys for the super the, the super chats and the cash apps, fam. Appreciate y'all. Much love. All right, all right. Let's keep it rolling here, man. And that's a part of the mixture, fam. Let's go into our next article right here. The Saints will host Jaguars for two joint practices. Two joint practices, fam, coming up here. Uh, And let's get into it. All right. And it says there will be some intriguing. uh, Let's see. There will be some intrigue on the Bayou in mid-August. In advance of the preseason matchup between the Saints and the Jags, the two will meet up for a pair of joint practices in Louisiana on August the 20th and the 21st, the league announced on Monday. The biggest story of New Orleans training camp will be the club's quarterback competition, which we just talked a little bit about between James Winston and Taysom Hill, or as Drew used to call him, Tamus. <laughs> While the Jacksonville Jaguars are implementing a new scheme with several new players under uh, head coach Urban Meyer, which they're really intriguing because I, I want to see what Jacksonville can do. Urban Meyer is there. They got uh, the kid from Clemson as quarterback and the kid from Clemson as running back. They got some DJ Chalkers out there. I mean, they built up the offensive line. It's going to be intriguing. Jacksonville should actually be quite competitive this year. They should be, man. No more coaching is not an excuse. Running game is, shouldn't be an excuse anymore. None of that should be. Jaguars should be able to win some games. But anyway, let's keep it going. All right, uh, they're implementing a new system under Urban Meyer. These sessions will be a good measuring stick for where Winston and Hill both stand heading to the season. The man that the man either Winston or Hill will replace Drew said he can see a scenario where both men are playing. Absolutely, absolutely. That's the same scenario that I agree with. That both men will play. In my in my estimation, Taysom Hill will uh, will be as a compliment to Jameis Winston. But there is a world where Taysom could beat out Jameis. We'll see. All right, so with that being said, let's keep it going. Uh, on the other side, New Orleans Saints defense should be a good test for number one overall pick, Trevor Lawrence, who will presumably be the team starter in week one. Absolutely. The Saints have been searching for another cornerback since releasing Jack Rabbit Jenkins in March to get under the salary cap, but with a clear system in place, New Orleans should still present challenges for the young QB. Saints and Jags will square off on Monday, August the 23rd at 8 p.m. Eastern time. And there's also an update right there that's saying 4.27 p.m., after the NFL announced the joint practice, the Jags and Saints confirmed 
and that they aren't that they aren't actually happening that to the pft that they aren't actually happening so we'll see how they go so they put the article on the update that they might change the practices so we'll see on that we'll see on that getting that update right there we'll see also and then of course on the final story right here update the list of new orleans saints 2022 free agents we'll go over this as a brief uh look into the future when i used to, when i talk to the family members about all the stuff that i talk to you guys about about the future of the saints and the black and gold and all to I tell you guys that the Saints have 15 to 20 free agents that's going to be coming up, and there's, it's going to be a, another tough year to try to uh, bring some talent back. This is what I was referencing to, and this article kind of share a little light on this coming from Saints Wire. Thank you, Brother Pat. Rich, appreciate your super chat, my friend. Let me see what Brother Pat Rich is uh, dropping on. Give me just a second, bro. Let me get to you soon. Okay, there it is. Hold on. Just give me a second. Let me read that, bro. Give me just a second. Let me. All right. Uh, thank you for your super chat. He says, Jameis got them eyes fixed Watch out, y'all. A blind man, <laughs> KC Dalfield, OMG, INTs, cut into, okay, cut. <laughs> All right, brother Pat Rich, I got you, fam. Much love. Appreciate the super chat, fam. Much love to you. All right, let's see. Let's keep it going here. Jeffrey says, uh, hold on, let me see what Jeffrey says here. Let me read that before I get back into that article right here. All right, Jeffrey says, I'm going to be real. It's a legitimate QB competition. But if Winston does what he's supposed to do, he should win the job. But I'm not going to say that Taysom don't have a chance because he definitely does. He, do, he does have a chance. But it's it's like the questions is asked. If Taysom Hill has worked on and and we talked about that, that, you know, what I just mentioned, all the tangibles, pocket, pocket presence, stand in the pocket. Pocket presence was lends to pocket patience, which lends to him going through his progressions patiently, which lends to him having the clock in his head to know uh, going through his progressions, first, second, third, fourth, otherwise. And then if you don't see anybody going to the check down, also being astute enough not to run over people like a jackrabbit and to start jumping up and down like you usually do, but to slide, you know, when he takes off instead of running over people, uh, try to slide more. You know, smaller QB play there is his accuracy for the intermediate and deep passing routes. Is that there? So it's quite a few things to talk about when you talk about Taysom within four games of QB experience versus a guy who has 70 games worth of QB experience and been in his three years younger than him. That's a lot to overcome. And I'm not saying that he can't because the the, the basically the the whole life of Taysom Hill has been a guy that's an example about overcoming uh, everything to become what he is. So, I mean, his <laughs> who Taysom represents is a guy that overcame obstacles just to be where he is. He was a special teams player making pitlins. He's now a multi-million dollar playmaker that people have to game plan for. You know, when he comes out on the field, people have to watch out for Taysom Hill. He's, he's now classified as a playmaker. Now, he fumbled the damn ball a lot too much the last couple of years, last, well, in particularly last year. But I won't, you know, I like Jameis, but listen, Taysom Hill is a guy that, like I said, he's a guy that does have a lot of a lot to offer. But, you know, like I said, we'll see how he, what he brings. It's a lot. All right, Derek. What's up, Derek? Big ups to your fam. Adrian, 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 Rocky, Adrian, Rocky. Rocky eye hanging out of his face. He's still yelling for Adrian. He better what I was like, man, this guy could be Adrian. Rocky. Like, man, how could you hear? It's a stadium full of people. She's in the crowd. How you how could he hear? Adrian. Shut up. <laughs> Adrian. Man, eye hanging out of his face. He just got his ass whooped by Club Elaine, Mr. T. And his his eye hanging out of his face. Adrian. You better be yelling for a damn doctor. All right, big ups to you. What's up, FBA 504? How you doing, fam? Chiming in from Vegas. Much love, fam. Appreciate you. What's up, Patrick? Who that to you? Pat Washington. Who that to you, fam? Much love to you. Appreciate y'all being here, man. Hit the like button, fam. All right, let's keep it going. Let's look at this updated list of New Orleans Saints 2020 free agents, man, as well, man. Let's look into it. Now, this is some of the guys we talked about. And like I said, I've been warning the family members about, about uh, you know, what we got to look out for for the 2022 year. Let's get into it. Let's start with the good news. New Orleans Saints won't have nearly as much work to do to reach salary cap compliance in 2022. They already have a good idea of how the financials are laid out 
who their free agents will be and who needs to be paid. But that's the easy part. The challenge will be cutting big enough slices of the pie to keep everyone happy. As we saw in 2021, that's easier said than done. So which Saints players are on track to test free agency next year? Here's the list. All right. So with that being said, let's look at it, man. You see unrestricted Tyron Armstead at the top of the list. And of course, with Ryan Ramchick getting that big payday, and then you got guys like Landon Young, the what, six round draft pick offensive lineman from the University of Kentucky, who a lot of people seen as a, uh, a second or third round pick candidate, with, who was a pretty uh, battle tested and good uh, offensive tackle, plays the right tackle position sitting there. And the Saints have options if they really want to. I guess you could stay, throw Hurst in there if you like, but being he's the third guy. But do you go back to Armstead? Can the Saints, you know, I'm pretty sure Armstead's going to you know, draw some interest on the free agency list. Unrestricted. I don't think the Saints, and I've said this before, I don't think the Saints match Tyrone Armstead uh, to bring him back here. I think that'll be a little bit too much. The Saints are looking to kind of transition to younger players on offensive line that don't cost as much. So you giving Ryan Ramchick the money for the next five years, I think Landon Young or even, uh, you know, a scenario where I could see possibly an Andrews Pete moving to right tackle to justify the position. I, I, I don't I don't know. I personally, if I had to vote on, I think I think Teron Armstead is going to be gone. So with that being said, let's keep on. But these are some of the guys, Teron Armstead. And then, of course, Marcus Williams, who's unrestricted. The Saints just going to tag Marcus again next year. I mean, they ain't going to pay him $13 million. It, it, And the crazy thing is, it don't go down. That's the cold part about it is when you talk about the money. Marcus wants $13 million a year. People going to tell me, Q, and I'm telling you, the who that nation is split on Marcus Williams getting this money. I mean, I've never seen a player – that they're so split on. Like, people, it's like on one side, Q, he's a pro bowler, ball hawk. And then on the other side, Q, he's garbage. Let him get his ass up out of here. I mean, seriously, it's like that. It's, it's really like that. Thank you, Big Low, for your super chat, fam. He said, Big Q, much love to you. And the great Saint Tank Tank, I really, he said, I really up to you. Great channel, even though you are a Saints fan. <laughs> Thank you, Big Low, much love to you, bro. And congratulations on the growth of Big Low Country Sports out there. Much love, family. It don't make a difference, Big Low. If you're a Falcons person or not, you're still my brother, and I still got all the love in the world for you. I'm very proud of you and the great work that you're doing over there at Big Low Country Sports. Really good dude, man. Much love to my brother, Big Low. Thank you for being here, bro. All right, let's keep on going. All right, and then, of course, this is Lad Laddie Daddy. I'm Laddie Daddy. I'm Laddie Daddy. I live in the igloo. Well, he's going to be unrestricted uh, as well. And the Saints, if they pay Mark, Marshawn, uh, if they pay the brother, listen, pay Laddie Daddy, man. Pay Laddie Daddy. Give him his money. Three-time pro bowler. Young cornerback. Give him his money, man. Give him his money, man. Bottom line, man. Who that? What's up? Who that? Uh, uh, who that? We that? TNT. What's up, fam? Thank you for being here as well. All right. Laddie Moore is up there unrestricted. Hopefully, the Saints can get a deal made with him. Look at this one. Taysom Hill is unrestricted next season as well. This dude everywhere. This little ball head dude. This little dude be everywhere. Y'all be saying the little, little dude be all over the place. This dude be on the the, the guy. I thought he was just the guy that bring the Gatorade. That dude be that dude be all over the place, man. I like who who the hell is this dude? But anyway, Taysom Hill is uh, is is up there. He's unrestricted. Jameis Winston is unrestricted. Of course, Jameis sell, signed that one year deal. Then, of course, you got Patrick Robinson. Thank goodness he unrestricted. Uh, and then you got P.J. Williams. Thank goodness he unrestricted. Uh, Trey Quan Smith in the final year, he's unrestricted. You got Will Clapp is uh, unrestricted. You got uh, Dwayne Washington, Keith Peace, and these are one-year deal people as well. You know, these are special team aces that they'll bring back eventually. You got Ty Montgomery on the one-year deal. You got Ken Crawley. Thank goodness he's unrestricted. Uh, Noah Spence, uh, really can't say much about Noah. Noah, uh, has been with several teams and he was with Tampa Bay early on and he just can't stand, just can't stay healthy, man. Hopefully he can do something with the Saints. Fullback Alex Armour on a one year deal with the black and gold. So we'll see that. Peanut, who that bro? Good to see Peanut in the building. Much love, fam. Appreciate you being here. Much love to you. All right. Then you go on down here. Who this guy is? Deontay Harris is restricted. We got to get brother Deontay back on the squad, man. Okay, you got Shy Tuttle restricted. You got Carl Grandison restricted. You got Ethan Greenwich restricted. You might as well unrestrict him. Boy, he was terrible last year. Garrett Griffin, who can't get on the field. 
You got Kyle Murphy, who just, you know, whatever. Practice squad guy, Jalen Dalton, exclusive rights. Uh, you got Dowell, who's another practice squad player. Christian Montano, who's a practice squad player. Sutton Smith, this kid right here, uh, you know, who's a linebacker, fullback type, is uh, also exclusive. And you got Aesop Winston, who is exclusive, a speedster right here. Uh, Aesop might, you know, watch out for Aesop. Quentin Poling, who's ex- exclusive as well. And you got Jalen McCleskey and Derek Kelly, Elbert Huggins, Chase Hansen, and Jawan Johnson, all exclusive. Those last several players are exclusive. But if you go all the way back up to the top at the, at the top players on this list, Teron Armstead, Marcus Williams, who they'll just tag again, Marshawn Lattimore, who they should resign to get him off this list. You got Taysom and Jameis, both uh, free agents, unrestricted now. Of course, we ain't going to be upset about Patrick Robinson or P.J. Williams or uh, even Teron, uh, Traquan Smith to see what he can do. This is it's a show and tell for him. We'll clap all the, the rest of these guys can come back on the cheap because you can get each and last one of these guys on the cheap. If you really wanted them to come back, they can come back on the cheap. But when you talk about quarterbacks, that's a big thing. Teron Armstead, I mean, Teron Armstead with Taysom Hill and Jameis Winston. And plus, you're about to come up off a contract with Marshawn Ladder, Ladder, Daddy Lattimore. So, I mean, that's a lot of bread to come up with. And that's why the Saints stockpile and picks nine and 10th picks for the upcoming year. So it'll be interesting to say the least, man, about how they handle this. Now, this is kind. This is for next year, fam, for 2022. And like I said, they're look, the Saints are going into transition. So we'll see how it all shakes down the line. But I'm just sprinkling this game on y'all about your players. What's up, Ken Rasa? Big ups to you. Nolan's 50 faces. Who do you think about uh, their? What I think about uh, Kelly? I think Kelly's good, man. You know, I like at first. You know, I think Kelly. He took the position from, you know, that that remember Cam Tom was the guy that they liked a lot from uh, what Cam Tom was from SMU. No, not from SMU, from Southern Miss. And then you had Derrick Kelly stepped on the scene. Then they got rid of Cam Tom. Tom ended up with the Dolphins. I want to say with the Dolphins. And then Derrick Kelly earned some active time on the Saints offensive line. He was uh, activated and he was on the team for the last several seasons. So they like Derrick Kelly a lot. And Derrick Kelly is not a bad offensive lineman. He plays the guard position, either guard side. I don't, I don't know about his skills as a center, but I think if he can develop that, learn how to play the center position a little bit. Coach Payton like his guys to do two things. If you're a tackle, he wants you to learn to play tackle and guard just in case. If you're a guard, you got to learn to play guard and center. That's why you see Will Clapp there. They have value. A guy like Will Clapp who can play center and guard. Then you got a guy like um, uh, uh, James Hurst who can play tackle or guard. That's value there. So, Derek Kelly, even though he played both guard positions, it also helped him if he learned how to play the center position. Uh, it would definitely help him. But yeah, Derek Kelly is a, is, is a pretty decent offensive lineman uh, as a backup. So, you know, I'm not mad at that. All right. Thank you for the question. Uh, An all uh, five for who that to you, fam. All right. Uh, BC Lewis. What's up, fam? Big ups to BC. Lori, what's happening, baby? Much love to Lori. Who that? And big ups to the Queens. Like I said, I always get a sports coma Queens. A uh, big shout out when they come into the stream. Much love to the ladies. Uh, please hit upon a like button. Family over nine of us in this joint. Let's hit the like button right here and subscribe if you aren't a subscriber as well. Now, let's uh, we're getting close to the end of the show. Let me go back and then kind of go over the past stories that we covered in the summation of the time that we've been on here. All right, let's take a look at it. All right. The first one we covered was does the Saints uh, interest in Xavier Howard uh, have merit. We covered that from Ms., uh, for Brother Kyle T. Mosley at the Saints News Network. We went through this article and then preferenced it by the tweet by Jeff Duncan, who it's highlighted that says, if the Saints hit, if, if Howard, Xavier Howard hits the trade market, that I, meaning Duncan, expect the Saints to be heavily involved in trying to land him. So that spurred, you know, some interest about what does it mean? So we went over Kyle T. Mosley's article, which was pretty good. And then we prefaced it and added to it by players that could be a part of a trade. Picks are players involved in a trade that could land a Xavier Howard. So it's pretty cool how they uh, kind of work together to create both articles to give insight. And I covered both here. And also to go over this, to add an extra veneer or layer, layer to this, 
you know, I got the receipts out, fam. You know, I'm going to break out the receipts. And we take a look at, uh, and you see right here in this corner, fam. If you go here, this is Sport Track right here, dropping the science as usual. And you take, let me get that off of there. Okay. And if you take a look at law, right here, they, they calculated market value by law, Marshawn Lattimore is 16.7. That's what Sport Track is hitting you with. But the reality at the end of the day is there are several questions that bring up why would the Saints be interested in a Xavier Howard trade? He's making 15, what is it, 12 million, whatever it is, and he wants to increase in pay. He wants another contract. He thinks his contract is a bit unfair. So with that being said, that would be a huge deal in which the Saints, I don't think they'll want to be able to pay for two cornerbacks that are basically two top five or top three paid cornerbacks. If you bring Xavier Howard here via trade and then you say, okay, we're going to keep Lattimore and you sign both of those guys, they're going to be the highest paid tandem in the NFL. You know, do the Saints want to go that route? Because my thinking is the Saints don't want to go that route. They want to kind of be smart about what they're dealing their money out. That's why Ramchek gets his money because it's, you know, you know, Ramchek is still, he's going to be a great asset. He's been an asset, but he's going to be even better. He also, we realized that about Lattimore. Three times he's been a pro bowler for the Saints. He's given them high production. You should pay him as well. He'll get his dough. I just, it's this is kind of interesting because if they want Howard, do they pay Marshawn Lattimore and Howard? It's interesting. And it also begs the question, if they're interested in Howard, according to Duncan, then why in the, you know, what the hell is going on with Lattimore? You know, it, 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 it something going on here because you touch Lattimore's contract just to rework it so you can free up money to sign the draft picks, but you then don't come back to it. You rework an extension. No, you didn't touch it, re rework it to free up money for the draft picks and then bounce the Ram checks contract and pay Ram. Then miss it. Then say, well, no, we're going to keep Marcus William on the 10.6, which is shown right here, by the way. Is the highest base salary right here at 10.6, but don't go back to Lattimore. Maybe they're working on Lattimore now, but it just, it doesn't make any sense because I don't think the Saints are going to do both. You're not going to trade for Xavier and Howard who wants a contract. He's disgruntled because he wants more money. So if you pay him, you're going to have to give him even more money. And then you still haven't given money to your three-time Pro Bowl cornerback who you drafted out of Ohio State, Mr. Marshawn Laddie Daddy Lattimore. So, I mean, it's a, something going on here. Do Are they holding on to more information? Do they have more information about Mar, about Marshawn Lattimore's case? Is that what's going on here? What the hell is going on here? Why are we looking at Xavier Howard? I, I mean, you know, strong. Look at what Duncan said. Duncan ain't no bum now. Duncan is an experienced guy. He's been covering the Saints four years. And he says, I expect the Saints to be heavily involved in that. Why? Why? Why are, you, why are they doing that? Why are you doing that? But anyway, let's get into it. Let's go back to that. And like I said, you see, where is Lattimore's contract at, Marcus? Where is Lattimore at? Here we go. This is, and Lattimore is, uh, let me see, just over nine. And they reworked this contract. And let me see if I can get it on screen right here. Lattimore's contract. This is via Sport Track, by the way. Very interesting, intriguing, man, because you can't, I don't think they going, it, it, that'll go against their logic, in my opinion, if they try to go get this Howard guy and listen don't you know howard's a, a, a good cornerback you know what i'm saying he's a good cornerback you're not wrong with his neck you know he getting interceptions 10 interceptions and then like uh like the fan like family member told me in the chat the last time the saints had a 10 interception cornerback was in 1967 good grief good lord that's a long time you know that wasn't that the second year of existence for the saints <laughs> damn but anyway this is this is Lattimore, 25 years of age 11 pick round one back in 2017, three Pro Bowls in four years. Now, you can look at his contract, one year left on the contract that we worked this deal. And of course, Sportrack got it and they threw it out in phantom years. You see, avoided phantom years. That's what this is right here. That spread out all the way to 2015. That's the work of Kai Harlan and Mickey Mouse Loomis doing that, drawing phantom years and shit. So, I mean, even though you can say, well, cute, you can make it work on the first year, Lattimore making less than a million. 
But you got to give him a contract extension. The optics is all wrong on all of this, in my opinion. You don't reach out and go get Xavier Howard, who making all that fat dough over there and want more dough, and then pass up Lattimore unless there's something going on with the Lattimore situation. And I done studied all of his case stuff. And, that, and from what I'm s- s- saying, that he's not he, he's clear of that, except for the suspension, which will more than likely be a game, maybe two, maybe three. But not enough to stop you from giving him an extension over the next several years like you did Ramchek. You know, pay the guy. Maybe that's to come. We'll see. But anyway, also, this is Xavier Howard. This is Xavier Howard's money. So I got Lattimore here who's making a meal. And of course, Lattimore, like it showed you his uh, his uh, uh, value at 6.7. Of course, we ain't going to give him 6.7. But the reality is the Saints have to be able to, get, you know, come to a happy medium where both of these guys, at, and hopefully they sign more Sean Lattimore. Man, don't do that to him. Now you got uh, Mr. Howard right here, who is uh, 28 years old. Lattimore's five years younger than him. And of course, Xavier been in a year a little a year longer out of Baylor, second round draft pick in 2016. You know, Lattimore was the first, but this guy's been productive. I got I, I can't tell you no wrong about that. Now he signed that five year deal with the Dolphins. This is his contract right here, and you see it goes all the way to uh, 2024. Now what's interesting about it is. He's playing under this figure this year. And as you can see, that's why that's why I mess with sport track. You see that right there, baby? That's an opt out that they placed in his contract after the third year to get from up under him. So, you know, if it don't work out this year, they can re- simply get from up under his deal and opt out in 2022. Uh, you know, only paying them three years at just under 40 million. And then they'll have a dead cap of two point eight million so they can get from up under this dude if he becomes a problem. But he knows that they got that opt out in there. That's why he pulling his leverage for twenty twenty one. He's not a fool. He know about the opt out in the contract. He knows. So he's like, uh, uh-uh, you ain't going to do me like that. I'm going to catch you up before you get me. Problem is, he's twelve million dollars on the season and the man wants more money. So, I mean, like I said, I'm just showing the family members the money because we could talk, and I do this on the Pelican Post Game Report. People be talking these players, and then I have to put the money up in front of them, and then it's a whole other discussion. <laughs> He's saying all of these names, but you are you know, but you got to say the numbers with them because the numbers matter, baby. The numbers matter. All right, he's represented by Clutch too. Oh my lord, he's represented by Clutch. You know who Clutch Sports is? All right, all righty then. All right, that was a whole nother veneer within itself. Clutch Sports representing this dude. <laughs> anyway, anyway, we'll get into the ring. We covered that, and also we covered the Taysom Hill favorite to open season as the Saints starting QB. And also, we covered this here, right here. Shut up. And then we talk about this right here. The Saints will host Jaguars for two practices right here. But they, this might this might change, fam. So we'll keep an eye out on the joint practices that they're going that they're going that they got going on because they did an update, as you can see, that says after the NFL announced the joint practices, the Jags and the Saints confirmed that they aren't actually happening. So the NFL announced it, and then both teams says uh uh-uh. uh. So we'll see how both of them got all confused and mixed up in this one, and then we'll come back to you on that one. And then, of course, we went over the New Orleans Saints 2022 20, free agents. A few guys to talk about uh, moving ahead in, on this contract. So, with that being said, that's all of the articles, baby, that we got to cover on today's show. Please hit up on the like button as well. What's up, the Godfathers in the building? What's up, Godfather Donald? What's and my dog Scoob's in the building? What's happening, pimping? What's up, pimping? What's going on, Scoob? Big ups to you, brother. All right, big ups to the family members. Appreciate y'all being in this thing, man. Much love to the great Saint Thank Tank and the Who That Nation, man. We're approaching an hour and a half, fam. And of course, on Monday shows, you know, I, I don't try to keep y'all for very long, fam. But I had a few things I wanted to go over and share with the with the family members about what's happening uh, with the Xavier and how I have the man name spell wrong up there. I thought it was Xavier Howard. It's Zavin Howard. So we got to correct that. But the reality is, fam, that, you know, Uh, What's up, Matt? What's up, Matthew? Good to see you. Who that to you, fam? Appreciate you being here, bro. Much love. And and, and see, that's the great thing about this. It's like, okay, let's put the facts and figures out there. Is it plausible? Is it feasible for us to reach for Mr. Howard? 
But the thing is, like I said, the optics is all bad. And I'm an optics man. I mean, it look all kind of ways bad. The optics is it, it, bad, baby, baby. Baby is bad. Baby, the optics is bad, baby. Baby, it just don't look right, baby. Baby, let me tell you something, baby. Before it even sound right, baby, I look, baby. Before they even say a word, baby. Baby, it don't look right, baby. It just don't look right. And it don't look right. It don't look right at all. It don't. I ain't gonna I tell you no difference. What's going on when you're looking at Howard and Lattimore sitting here saying, man, I done three Pro Bowls in four years. Isn't that enough? And then you say, okay, well, I had a little problem with happening in Cleveland, but I came out on the back end of that. That wasn't my situation. I'm straight now, you know? So we'll see how it goes because it's still a little less than a week before camp opens up. Perhaps they get the deal with Lattimore done, but for them to be doing that, it's kind of strange to me, you know? And it's strange to y'all fam. Why are you looking at a man making all that money and you got this young guy you raised and brought in the league? Three Pro Bowls and getting better and you won't pay him. Something going on there? Do they see uh, Lattimore as not worth that money? Like they see, well, they see Marcus Williams not worth that money. That's why they tagging him at 10.6. They tagging him. At, if they wouldn't have put that tag on Marshawn Lattimore, they probably would have put it on. Well, they couldn't put it on Lattimore because he had one year left on his deal. But it per, it's interesting, though, because you can't, you know, come. <laughs> I'm telling you, just pay the men, man. Pay the man. All right. Tragic says, what if you swap Laddie Dad in the third round for Howard? But why would you get rid of Howard, uh, Lattimore, though? I don't, why would you get Howard, get rid of Howard's three years, uh, what is he, three years older? Why would you do that? Why would you want to trade Howard for Lattimore? What did Lattimore do to... To say, okay, for the Saints to say, uh, I'm I'm ready to get rid of Lattimore for Howard, who's older and, and going to cost the money. I mean, he wants a, a pay increase. He's not like, okay, no, I want to go to New Orleans and I'll play on the contract that I had with Miami. No, you get the same. You Okay, he'll be happy to be here, but you, he won't be playing for you unless you give him an extension. So you basically take on whatever they taking on in Miami. His disgruntlement and everything. He'll be happy to be here, but he still won't get on the field until a contract's worked out. I just don't see why would you do that. I mean, the optics is bad to me, man. It really is. If you're looking for a cornerback, why go get a guy, uh, you know, and I know Howard's a top notch. He's a pretty good cornerback, 10 interceptions. And uh, anytime you could try to land a cornerback that led the NFL two of the last three years in terms of interceptions or had was up there. That's not, that means you got a guy that know how to turn his head around, locate the ball and not afraid to make it, make interceptions. I love that. But what I don't love is the fact that you put Marshawn Laddie, Daddy Lattimore on the block to do it. Really? I, I just don't understand. Why would we do that? Tragic. Uh, big ups. All right. Uh, much love to the family members. I'm going to get a few questions from y'all. Yeah, I know. I know Scoob is very strange. It's very strange, fam. It, and I, it's all them optics is all wrong, baby. What's going on? What happened? What's going on with that Lattimore stuff where you got talking about, I'm looking at Xavier. Y'all know the Saints ain't going to pay both of them. They're not going to pay both of them cornerbacks. Howard, who's disgruntled because he wants more money. And uh, you got Lattimore playing under a restructured deal that he becomes unrestricted next year. You ain't going to be able to tag them both. So you're going to have to pay the man one way or the other. What's going on though? Is the Cleveland thing playing, paying a part of it? Is what Lattimore really asking for? I mean, you got to pay him, man. Three Pro Bowls in four years. What more you want the man to do, man? What more you want him to do? You know? It ain't like, you okay, I want 13, 14 men. You ain't crack a Pro Bowl. You ain't even come close to a Pro Bowl. But this guy went to three Pro Bowls, and he's clearly one of your best defensive backs. And you're haggling. I mean, we'll see how that all shakes out, man, because we still got some time on that. We'll see. But I wanted to, for the Saints to be able to get Ram check, which they did, credit to him, and also get Lattimore on the contract before we go into camp so it won't be a distraction. Because you have a happy Lattimore in the secondary. He might miss a game or two or three, depending on what Goodell, what Goodell gives him. But you knew that anyway. We knew that well in advance. We had plenty enough time to bring in a veteran cornerback or add cornerback. We knew that shit before the draft happened, that we knew Lattimore. Wasn't that the case? Y'all remind me on that. We been knew about the Lattimore stuff. We had plenty of time to prepare for it. 
just like we have plenty of time to prepare for losing David on Yamada for six games. It didn't happen inside of the season, which you had to make a knee-jerk reaction because you got several really talented defensive tackles that can come in and play for the six games for when Yamada missing. You're just going to have some of your guys step up besides the veteran signing. And then, of course, you look at what's going on with Lattimore. You got plenty of time to bring somebody in here at the cornerback position. Hell, when the draft was, we could have drafted. I kept saying draft two cornerbacks. Why didn't you take two cornerbacks then? Then we wouldn't have this issue. We wouldn't have Peyton Turner, but at least we'll have some cornerbacks, you know? So, I mean, it's interesting, man. We'll see how it all shakes on the end, but let's see how the Saints handle this, man. We'll see how they handle this. This is most, this is very strange. There's all kinds of questions in my head. What's going on with that Lattimore stuff where y'all looking at this other man right here? You know, that's very strange to me. I don't know. I don't know. All right, Latrell. What's up, Latrell? He says, Q's, there's, there's any way we can get both? I mean, you can. You can. Latrell, you're right. You can have both. But realistically speaking, and I'm asking the entire who that nation, this question, do you think the Saints are going to pay Lattimore and Xavier Howard Remember, they ain't like you acquire Xavier Howard and he'd be like, man, I'm just happy to be a saint. I got multiple years left on my contract. I just won't play out my contract. No, he's only available because he wants more money, because he had all those interceptions, which means he felt like he overplay overplayed his contract, which is a nice contract. So if you're going to give Xavier that money, and look and ladder that it. Now remember, when you pay Xavier his money and Lattimore his money, both of those dudes are gonna be making uh well the other guy making 12, 13 plus million, 12 plus million right now. Lattimore's underneath the million. But if you give Lattimore his money, he's gonna be up there too. So you're gonna have two of the highest paid cornerbacks in the NFL. Then you got Marcus Williams tagged at 10.6. You gonna pay him too? You see what I'm saying? That's a lot of money to tie up in the secondary. Then a couple of years down the line, you got Chauncey Gordon Johnson beating around the block. I'm just saying, this is the great Saint Tank Tank. We are the, the we are the, the great Saint Tank Tank. We the who that nation. This is a think tank, which means that we we go over this stuff in our heads. They say, okay, well, we got to figure this in there out. What makes sense here? Financially and fiscally, what makes sense? It doesn't make sense for me because I don't think that's a part of the Saints long range plans to pay Xavier and Howard and Lattimore, it'll be either one or the other. And if it's Xavier, then why not Lattimore? What happened, which made you say, nah, we can't play with Lattimore. After th after four years and three, well, he going into his fourth year, but after, well, his fifth year, but at three Pro Bowls in four years, is that not enough for you? One incident comes up and you ready to ship him up out of here? You tell me if something wrong with that. That's all kind of ways wrong. It is, man. All kind of ways wrong. Scoob says Coach Rashad needs a crack at keeping Lattimore motivated and balling out. Thank you, Scoob. Uh, who that, we that, TNT said, I think going after Howard has more to do with needing a second cornerback. That's what's happening with, then what's happening with Lattimore. Okay, so I guess uh, it put, let me know what you think about that, who that, we that. You going to pay both of them? And if you're going to give Xavier how, I mean, <laughs> see, you could have paid Jackrabbit. You see what I was saying? Oh, the Saints didn't have the money, Q, but they freed up the money. Now they got the money, right? They could have paid Jackrabbit. They didn't have the money to tag Marcus Williams, but they did it. You know, they could have did. They could have made what they needed to make happen if they wanted to pay Jackrabbit Jenkins. You know, Mickey Loomis could have set up a contract where he could have paid Jackrabbit this year and then pushed Money into the second year of Jack Rabbit deal. You know he could have set it up. Look at the deal that the Texans signed with Jack Rabbit. It wasn't that expensive. It's a two-year contract. The second year is an option. I think it's what six or seven million. What is it? Six or seven million, something like that. That wasn't expensive, man. <laughs> it's just. But you're gonna pay Zayvon Howard. Which he's a top. He's one of the top cornerbacks in the NFL. I just don't know, man. I, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Thank you. Uh, we that. Uh, we that. Who that? What's up, Jose? Who that to you, fam? Oh, no no problem, brother Latrell. Much love. Uh, what's up, Jose? He says, uh, how about trade wide receiver Mike Thomas for cornerback Zayvon Howard and get a first or second round pick in 2022? I don't know about that, fam. I don't know. I think Saints, I don't think the Saints want to get, they're not going to get rid of Mike Thomas, bro. They're not going to get rid of their best wide receiver 
uh, for Howard, who we got a cornerback right now who's the number one cornerback in Marshawn Lattimore. So I don't I don't know if that I don't think the Saints make that trade. But thank you, Jose, for that. I don't think they're gonna they want to trade Mar, uh, um, uh, Mike Thomas for Xavier. All right, uh, let's see. O- Uncle Freddie says you're right. Uh, yeah, I know. Thank you, Uncle Freddie. Who that to you? I know. I smell something going on there, fam. All right, Ramsey said, "Hey, Q, I just, I, I just can't see them getting rid of Laddie Daddy because he's just as talented as Howard. Something does stink. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. What's going on? You know, the Saints are not going to commit that kind of money to two guys at that position, and then pay Marcus. Wait, think about it like this. My my rationale is okay. The Saints got eleven over eleven million right now. They're going to pay. They're going to absorb the contract of Xavier Howard, give up assets and picks and players to make our player." to get the deal done. Then pay Lattimore and absorb Howard, then gave Howard an extension and then keep tagging Williams on the cheap deal. The tag goes up on the second year and you're going to commit that much money to three players in the defensive backfield. Is that the game plan? Then why pick a Debo at all then with the third round pick? If he's, if he's, to be a nickelback? Well, Q, he's going to be the nickelback. No, he ain't. Why Why you said? Because Chauncey's the nickelback. Well, that's for Chauncey to go back to safety. No, he ain't. That's this year. So I don't know. I just don't. I, it don't make no sense to me. We just got to wait it out and see. All that stinks. Uh, Brother Derek, what's up? He said, Big Q, we can have both, but we're going to suffer in some areas. Is it really worth it? I don't think so. I don't think it's. I mean, I like Xavier Howard, but Howard wants more money. Let's put. Remember that, fam. Howard's, you would not have a crack at Xavier Howard if he wasn't holding out. And he's holding out because he wants more money. Well, if you trade and get him, he's going to continue to hold out because he, until he get his money, he ain't going to touch the field for nobody. You know, because he feels like the contract he had with them, he over he outplayed the contract. You know, so just consider that. Thank you, Derek, for that. I don't know, fam. I, I think it's a, something problematic's going on. Slim says they should have kept Jackrabbit, in my opinion. I, I mean, it's starting to make sense, right? All right. Okay, thank you. Uh, who that we, uh, uh, who that we, that TNT. Donald, the godfather, said, I think they'll bring a veteran like Atkins and others for the defensive tackle position. Thank you. What's up, Brian? Uh, what's going on with you, my friend? Thank you for uh, stopping by. Uh, who that to you? Brother Lloyd says they're paying Jackrabbit $7 million right now. Look at the dead cash. Okay, thank you, Lloyd. Appreciate that. Uh, Lloyd, let me ask you something. Lloyd, how you feel about them uh, paying Jack, uh, getting uh, uh, Xavier uh, Howard, then paying him more, paying Lattimore more, and then paying, uh, you paying Marcus Williams 10.6 uh, going into next year? That's a lot of bread. That's over, that's big time bread right there, over three defensive backs there. Big time bread. I just, I don't know if that's the, the game they're running, but y'all let me know what y'all think. Uh, Will Dickerson says, Big Q, could it be a play for Howard just to ask for more money so he can get out of Miami? Now, I think he, I mean, he might get tired of the losing there, but he's been very productive. I think he wants more money because he feels like he deserved it after all those interceptions over the last three years. So I, I think he really feels that he or he deserves that money. But that's still an indicator. We would not have a crack at Xavier and Howard if it wasn't for his disgruntlement over the, the contract is my point. So even if you get him, you still have to pay him before he touches the field. So you just get their problem. You know, he wouldn't be disgruntled. He'll be happy to get, be here, but his demand will be the same. I'm not getting on that field until you give me more money. I'm just saying. Think about that. Thank you, Will. Uh, Brian says, so where is the story of Howard come from? I told Bob Rose. He says, I told Bob Rose if he thought that Howard was worth all that, Mickey should be fired. Well, what's intriguing is the story came from uh, Jeff Duncan, which I showed the tweet that a lot of the articles are being written from the tweet that was put out by Jeff Duncan saying that if Howard's on the market, and he is on the market, by the way, is that the Saints would be heavy players and looking, uh, you know, and trying to acquire him. And my thing is, why? Now, I understand he's a talented cornerback and one of the best in the league, but why are you going after him and you got Lattimore unless you intended to pay? Bo- it just... We'll see. And I don't think the Saints going to pay both of them. That's the point. And Marcus Williams. So, no, something ain't right here. All right. Big ups to the fam. Uh, Brian says, bro, go get Fuller from Denver. <laughs> you know, so like I said, we will see, man. We'll see how it all shakes. But the who that nation got their brains turning on this one. This one here threw me for a little. I like, 
when I first seen it, I was like, man, it's just everybody that pops up, oh, the Saints should go get this guy. Oh, the Saints should go get this guy. I'm like, no. The Saints wasn't have heavy players in free agency. Well, that's because they didn't have any money, Q. Well, if that was the case, whose fault was it that they didn't have no money? They could have been opened up and re-signed these guys. Why? You know, they could have been. They had plenty of time. They weren't active in free agency. You know, they wasn't. They signed. The first thing they did was they signed a few guys back the under the, uh, you know, signings like uh, Noah Spence, cheap contracts. Then Alex Armand was the first dude. That was a one year deal. That didn't cost much money. The Tanu Passio deal was another deal that ain't cost much money. A lot of the free agent moves Saints had didn't cost much money. They tagged Marcus Williams 10.6. I guess they felt like he's worth it at 10.6, 11, maybe 12, but not over 13, which is where he wants it. He wants north of $13 million, 13 and up. Saints said, nah, we're going to keep you on 10.6 and then tag your ass again next year, just like they did, like Denver did with Justin Simmons. I can see the Saints doing that with that man, which is sad. Just pay the goddamn man, man. If you feel like he's worth it, what's, you know, pay the man. You know, he not worth that one. Then trade him. <laughs> trade him. You know, you think the money going to go down next year? The money go up next year. So you think you're going to be able to get it next year? Well, we're going to just hold on to him into 2020. Oh, come on, man. Cut that out. Derek says our second contracts are too messy right now, let alone adding more BS to the pot. Thank you, Derek. Much love. Lloyd says you pay Howard big money extension. You can get four quality years out of him. Laddie Dad is first rounder. The biggest difference. Consistency, self-made while being a lower pick. Thank you, Lloyd. Ramsey says, hey, Q, what do you think about going after Gilmore? I think that's even worse because Gilmore makes more money than Xavier and Howard. Matter of, matter of fact, Gilmore... It need the highest paid cornerback in the NFL. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's kind of worse. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Nola balls who that. Thank you for the question that Ramsey. Uh, Nola balls who that to you. Brian says, do you think Jameis has another experience, has enough, another experience to run this ball club and you win games and to win championships in your opinion? I think Jameis does have enough experience. Uh, 70 games worth of experience. I think people are, uh, have to remember when they, talk about the ills of Jameis Winston that he had total dysfunction with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers changing of offensive coordinators. Uh, they, they weren't, they were a bad team for many years, man, you know, and, and they put all that on Jameis to say Jameis was bad. James and Jameis was out there doing stupid stuff. He was out there with the Uber driver crap and doing all that silly shit on the field with the saints. When he poked Lattimore in the back, of his helmet and incited that fight. Remember that? And Jameis wasn't even playing in that game. And he did that, you know? So, I mean, I didn't like James because he was doing a lot of dumb shit. But what changed my my spirit toward James when I seen him come here and he started because I didn't want him on the team. I was like, man, this dude a problem. But you see, he changed in his life. He got married. He had the LASIK. You know, it's a whole different uh, feeling. He's not the same man he was. He he found peace in New Orleans, man. He found peace here. He found what he need to find so he can get his life together. And I'm a I'm a big time uh, promoter of that type of behavior turning the negative around into the positive. Like most of what we, most of us come, you know, we, we had, we went through the bad stuff to go through the good stuff. We had to understand what the bad stuff was to get to what the good stuff is. So you can understand the difference between two, between both, you know, you don't really truly appreciate a sunshine day unless you had several days of rain. You get what I'm saying? Or vice versa. When you have several days of just hot blistering sun and then that rain come to cool it up. You know what I'm saying? You don't want you really don't appreciate the one without the other unless you went through it. And I think Jameis Winston went through some stuff like that and he came out on the other side. He was delegated, relegated to a third string quarterback last year for the Saints. Watched a quarterback and Taysom Hill with no experience at the QB position play above him when Drew got hurt. He had to sit there and watch it happen. And he came back with an intense focus, determination, training in the off. I mean, he's serious. His focus is about taking the Saints to the Super Bowl. A lot of people writing them off. You don't think he's paying attention to all that? All them clips of Jameis Winston, this, that, and third. And them people not telling the full truth about why Jameis Winston, it, as a quarterback, was suffering in Tampa Bay with all that dysfunction out there. And then you add the Saints QB-friendly system, the weapons around him. That man ain't never had no weapons like Elvin Kamara and Mike Thomas, the Saints offensive line in the running game. He never had all that out there. Never. He ain't never had that type of consistency, a full team and plus our environment for him to grow. The consistency and 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 the, and the mindset of what we what we raise here, and he sat behind the Hall of Famer, and Drew gave him the tools into the game, both him and Taysom, to be honest with you. 
You know, so it'll we'll see how it all shakes. Both both of them been tutored by Drew. So we'll see how it all shakes. But I do think he has the experience and the mindset. The problem with Jameis Winston was him getting out of his own way. And he prepares differently. He's a different person. And people that's still thinking Jameis Winston is Tampa Bay Jameis Winston, y'all need to upgrade y'all antiquated thinking because he's not the same dude. Jameis Winston is a lot different than what he was when he played for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Trust me, because I ain't like his ass. And I was like, you get that goddamn guy out of here. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real with you. I'm telling you the truth. Thank you, Brian, for that. Uh, Brian Pearson. Brian Russell says they're just uh, talking heads, man. I don't believe nothing until I see it. Thank you, bro. All right, Mr. Pops. What's up, fam? Mr. Pops, you thought said we should have went after Rams a few years ago when we had the chance. Okay, yeah. All right, much love. Uh, all right. Well, let me see who else. I'm going to give a few shots out there. Uh, Lloyd says no Gilmore making 7-9 guaranteed. Okay, thank you. Yeah, Gilmore is a man. No, I mean, there was interest. There was people trying to link Gilmore to the Saints. Nah, man, you know, that's a that's like the biggest contract, I think, in the NFL as far as cornerbacks concerned with Gilmore. You know, I just don't know if the Saints, the Saints could pull it off if they wanted to. I just don't see, you know, monetarily speaking, why would they commit so much money to the secondary position when it was looking like they were trying to build the team through the secondary, like through the draft? You got a Debo there and they have high hopes on the Debo. So I, I we'll see. We'll see. I, it, it don't make any sense. Donald says Tampa is horrible. They did Doug Williams, Steve Young, Vinny Tessaverde, the same thing. Even Tony Dungy. That's sad. All right. Thank you. That Nola boss says real talk though. This is the most stability he's had his whole career. And he, yeah, I know. And that's sad. Yeah. And I, that's what I'd be trying to tell people about Jameis Winston is that you, you can't, it's not the same, man. Bruce Arians, and Sean Payton, that's two different worlds altogether. The New Orleans Saints room and the Tampa, that's two total, totally different worlds. I mean, Bruce Aarons would, you know, what he was running out there was problematic. Even Tom Brady got into it with him about how his offense was. He got into it with him. And because of how he was just, it just didn't make any sense. And they didn't really see the success until Tom Brady used his influence the change that he see it was a battle between uh, Arians and Tom Brady and Tom Brady won out because one of the prerequisites to land Tom Brady was that he had GM duties that he can bring certain, he can say which players he wanted and you got to bring them in here. Remember that Tom Brady wasn't no dummy. You know, he wasn't no dummy. He knew what he was doing. He had control over that playbook to a degree. And he did it too. Cause you knew, you know who you're dealing with with Bruce Arians, but to put all that on Jameis, that ain't fair, man. You know, he had his part, but at the same time, Tampa Bay was horrible, man. Y'all know that, and we know that, because we were stumping out out them people all them years out there. Y'all know that. <laughs> I'll tell you, all y'all know that, but they don't never want to put most of them guys that's covering Jameis from a national level that's out there that just they don't like Jameis Winston. That's all they talk about is 30 interceptions. They don't give them no credit for nothing. It's just they just ride down on the man, which is fine. Because he, that it's time for us to step up and stump the hell out of all of them talking all that mess. And, and trust me, they be listening. Who that we that says they hold on to that 30-30 season like James did every season. James' stats are some of the best across the board. He had 5,109 yards. That year he threw them 30 interceptions with 33 touchdowns. And then even they say, and family, even like we that uh, who that we that says, they say 30-30 season is 33-30. They even tried to take three touchdowns away from him. <laughs> he threw 33 inter I mean, throw 30 interceptions. He threw 33 touchdowns that year and 5,109 yards to lead the NFL that year. They don't, they'll go through the 5,109. They'll go through the 33 touchdowns and go right to the third. 30. See, I told y'all he ain't no good. He's going to throw all kind of picks, Q. All right. Okay. All right. All right. I got you, fam. I got you. All right, only one thing left to do to see what happens, right? That's all I can say. All right, so fam, listen, uh, that's going to do it for me on this show. I appreciate y'all for chiming in here. If y'all like the stream, please feel free to join our Patreon, patreon.com. If you want to support us, support us at the Patreon at patreon.com forward slash the Pro Media Network, patreon.com forward slash the Pro Media Network, patreon.com forward slash the Pro Media Network. The link is in the description section. I'll become a YouTube member. That also helps. And when you get that, when you do that, you get access to lock content on our Patreon page. That's over 50 plus shows of TSC 
Q&A Live, which is a, a Tuesday show that we do for our Patreon family members. You get access to that. And if you're on the Patreon side, you also get On Q with Big Q, which is a new show that we do where we talk about that real deal on there. Holy field. So if you can help out by doing that, you can also share the links uh, in your social media. That helps out as well. And uh, you can check out the pro shop. We got links in the, in the description section below two different shops, uh, pro gear, uh, pro attire, hundreds of dozens of products available, socks, shirts, tees, all that kind of stuff is available at our pro shops. That also helps out the platform. So with that being said, listen, I want to thank each and every one of you guys for joining us today on this Monday stream. And we'll be back on TSC Q and a lot of our Patreon show tomorrow, uh, covering some topics as well. Uh, getting into the season. Also, we just did a uh, full breakdown of that's available uh, for our Patreon and our YouTube member family, uh, breaking down the entire Saints roster from top to bottom. I mean, every player breakdown is two plus hour breakdown broken up in two separate shows. One covers the offense, the other one, the defense and special teams. That's available also on Patreon and also our YouTube membership. Uh, so with that being said, fam, I'm going to clock out on that. What's up, Jarvis? Who that to you, fam? Good to see you in the chat, man. Much love to you, brother. Appreciate you being here. Big ups to you. All right, and thank you to all of the family members out there. Please hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber, man, hit the hell out that subscribe button and join the Sports Coma. All the great Saint Thank Tank, we in the building. So with that being said, fam, y'all have a great rest of your day, a fantastic Tuesday, and I'm going to see most of you guys on Wednesday, the rest of the family members. I'm going to see y'all on TSC Q&A live on Patreon tomorrow. Much love to you. Who that? And I'm out. Yeah. Well, all right. Like you always say. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Number one sports talk indeed. indeed. Uh. We ain't like the Falcons. We won't blow the lead. Look, all we talk is who that? Uh. Who got cut and who back? Uh. Rookies in the vents. Uh. Players you should look at. Yeah. It's the sports coma. You don't want to miss it. Got the pre-game, party, post-game statistics. Get a visit from Sway. Maybe DC or fly. It's the hottest thing smoking. Big Q in the guys. Go to YouTube live. Make sure you subscribe. In the views inside the Saints locker room high. Talk to Drew. Jordan, Zach, Peyton, uh, New Orleans, who that nation? Uh, Best believe when I say we be golden black. Ain't a miracle or rivalry could ever hold us back. No, Beast Quake, Bounty Gate, let the truth be told. It's the sports coma. All we know is say Super Bowl. Yeah. You're listening to the sports coma with Big Q and the guys on the PRO Media Network. Daily.com. That's right, the Who That Daily.com. Your one stop mm. shop for everything New Orleans Saints, New Orleans Pelican, LSU Tigers, mm. even the top flight boxing news. So if you're a Who That and you're looking for a place to stay mm. up on your team, the Who That Daily.com is your site. The Who That Daily.com for the sport Who That in all of us.